What's up guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week 7 of the GBA D-League. This week we are up against It's a Gregulator, um, followed by some numbers, I want to say 60. I feel so bad now, I should know this by now, but um, just in case you aren't aware, this is the team builder. The battle will be going up tomorrow. I am really excited, mainly because this is the first video I'm making on my new computer. Um, the struggles of downloading all the editing software in my 3DS capture card stuff is all over thank god i can now just get back to making videos again which is what i want to do um another disclaimer uh, i've got a really sore throat so if i sound off or need to stop for a minute because that that's that's why because i, I feel like someone has got wolverine's claw and just shredded my throat to pieces so um We'll go over my team anyway. Um, first of all, actually, I guess the most important thing is looking at the drafts, mine and Greg's. Um, it's important to look at mine, uh, mainly because we have made some transfers, and I just realised I haven't made myself a transfer video yet to explain um, my transfers, so I might as well just combine it into this now. Um, you can see we have dropped uh, Staraptor, Electivire, and Delmise, and we've picked up Zerkatry, Gogoat, and Cofagrigus. Now, and the reasoning, the ultimate reasoning behind my transfers is to have a bit of fun because realistically I'm not going to make the playoffs. Um, I am 1 and 5 uh, before this week and on minus 15 differential. So realistically I'm not going to catch up to the guys who are up near the top of the league and you know fighting for playoffs. So there's no harm in me trying just to have a bit of fun, trying some new mons out and uh, some mons that you might not see necessarily in a draft. When I say that, I mean Go Goat, but who isn't excited for me to bring Go Goat one week? So that's the main reasoning. Plus, uh, Zerkatry is kind of nice to have. I, I wanted a powerful electric type. Staraptor wasn't really going to do much for me in the games we had left. Um, for example, as you can see, Greg had a Celesteela in his draft, Glissopod, Vullaby. Um, obviously, he had a load of Marowak, but you know, Zerkatry could have done, can do something this week. So. Uh, you know, uh, and, and in the upcoming weeks too, the matchup seems pretty solid. So, Zerkatry seemed like a cool uh, sort of mon to try out. Plus, I do love Beast Boost. Who doesn't love a super powerful electric type? Because it's not frail, it's not bulky, but it's not frail. And uh, considering electric types only a week to ground, it, I figured like it'd be something I want to try out. Um, Go Goat is literally the goat. Um, it's so well it can be fat it's got base 123 hp um solid special defense i think it's like it's in the 80s somewhere physical defense is a bit you know um lower but it does get access to bulk up it has access to leech seed milk drink horn leech so all of the recovery and it's got some pretty decent uh, coverage moves like surf earthquake aerial ace things like that there's probably more that i can't think of off the top of my head that's those um, and then what we do have in Cofagrigus is we still have our spin blocker um, obviously we've got a grass type in go goat so basically um, Cofagrigus with toxic spikes would be lovely it'll help wear down the walls um, which really helps with megalop um, in the long run because megalop is you know like a late game kind of cleanup kind of mon um, something that I'm not doing apart from uh, last week where I lost but lop did do well I'll give it that that freeze on the ice punch um, so the toxic spikes can help plus it's more fat because I I know I had a bit of fat on my team before but um, being forced to run something like Latias or the fable like super fat all the time is really frustrating um, along with scum tank as well now I've got things that can switch into dark type moves things that can switch into ghost type moves um, so I felt like it would fit quite well so that's kind of that for the um, for the transfers. We'll look into Greg's team. Uh, he has got uh, an incredibly scary team. I don't know how he managed to draft it. Um, he has made a lot of transfers like really early on in the season. I can't remember what was what so I won't go over that but as you can see he's got the Zygarde 50%, Celesteela, Mega Gallade, Nihilego, Sneasel, Rotom Wash, Alolan Marowak, Whimsicott, Silvalli, that's all forms of Silvalli, Vullaby and Golisopod. Now Golisopod and Zygarde 50% are his Z users. So if I didn't see a Golisopod, which could, could, like, could come this week, um, it's got a lot of things going for it in the matchup. Um, then Zygarde will be his only potentially like, um, or his only potential Z user. Um, and I'm really not sure what to make of, of Zygarde this week. It could be many different things to do different bits of work. So we'll just go over what we've got here. Um, 
two of the three new mons making their debuts this week, so that's kind of exciting. Um, we'll go straight in with Zerkatry first of all. Um, I've, I have actually obviously played the game since um, since making this team builder, so I know what happens. Um, but before team building, this is what I decided to do. Uh, so before the game, this is what I decided to do with Zerkatry. We have gone Sugarberry, so I can take a hit from even banded Zygarde. And pretty much just bop it with a hidden power ice. Um, but we've got Thunderbolt. Excuse me, I need to do it. Sorry, it's, uh, it's still early in the morning for me. Right, now that's out of the way. I feel like I can talk properly now. Right, so um, we've got Thunderbolt, obviously, for just powerful stab. Toxic, mainly because, like, whatever set of Zerkatry I run, Alola Marowak falls it. And every time this thing is in, Alola Marowak gets a free switch in. Um, and Alola Marowak, I have zero switch ins. Like, the whole of my defensive core gets ruined by it, uh, by like, Stab, um, Registeel, Latias, Cockagrigus, Gogo, um, Clefable doesn't, but it's Clefable, it's not like a physically defensive monster, um, if it's like an offensive Marowak then we could be in deep trouble, um, so Toxic is like the best thing I had to, to hit that, I needed Hidden Power Ice for the Zygarde, I know it gets Dazzling Gleam, but Hidden Power Ice is just way more powerful, has the chance to Oko, um, uh, Zygarde, I think even like max HP, maybe not if it's max special defense, but still does a huge chunk to it, so um, I didn't really want to run the risk of, you know, running Daz and Gleam, not doing enough damage with the Hidden Power Ice, uh, um, or with the Daz and Gleam, you know, over the power of Hidden Power Ice, and then Energy Ball is here just to hit, uh, what is it to hit, is to hit the Rotom Wash, I mean, Thunderbolt will still do a lot anyway, uh, it's just kind of filler at this point because it doesn't really hit much other than the Rotom Wash, um, and I don't think Rotom will be a switch into this thing anyway, his switch in all day every day is the Nihilego or the uh, Alolan Marowak depending on what he brings. Hidden Power Ice does also allow me to hit the uh, Whimsicott, uh, it, that, that's it, it allows me to hit the Whimsicott as well, um, but you know, things like Sneasel, um, Rotom Wash, uh, Celesteela, none of them appreciate Thunderbolt, Sylvali depending on its typing, uh, Whimsicott while it resists probably still doesn't appreciate it, Glisspod doesn't appreciate it, so you know just the raw power of this thing, I've decided to go modest um, with a lot of bulk just like I said so I can live the um, thousand arrows, banded thousand arrows with the sugarberry, if he's Z-move, adamant, um, it still kills me through the sugarberry which is sad times but um, I'm not thinking he's going to be Z-move this week, um, I'm thinking very much that he will be either banded or like a, a leftover setup set of some sort, um, and even then I have got the potential unaware Clefable, so who knows. Um, we've got 108 speed, which is enough to, so Zygarde with no speed investment hits 115, I have just put a little bit extra in there in case he tries to speed creep my speed creep. Um, or not at all, have I? No, yeah, just in case he puts 4 in speed actually is what I've done, so I've put enough in to try and outspeed that. And that's Zerkatry this week, um, it's basically there for the Celesteela, because the rest of his team deals okay, well, some of his team deals okay with it, but nothing really wants to switch into a Thunderbolt other than the Marowak or the Zygarde, but even then, Zygarde has, runs the risk of taking Hidden Power Ice as well, if that's what his switching is, so might have to do a bit of scouting first of all in the actual match, but, you know, see what he's switching into this thing is, um, and, and it could potentially do some good damage, so excited to use this thing as well, that's definitely like the, the top one out of the three which I'm looking forward to using the most out of my new transfers, so. Next up, we are going to go back to our boy Floatzel, um, I need to do something with floats all this season. Um, people might have raised eyebrows when I picked him. Um, I'm sticking by it. He's a really cool mon and a really good mon to use. So um, I'm going to stand by that. Now, what you might notice on the screen is I made a bit of a boo boo in building. I, I just completely overlooked the fact that he had Mega Gallade. So when I did the EVs, I only made it to outspeed um, Nihilego. And this actually makes a huge difference in the game, which you'll see it forces me to pl make a move that I wouldn't have made if I actually outsped um, Mega Gallade. Spoilers, Greg does bring Mega Gallade, but that's to be expected, it's a Mega Gallade. Um, I, I, I completely dirt from team building, um, but so it made me play my you know game a bit different, but you'll see that in the back video tomorrow. But we'll go with what we've got. We have got Floatzel with the Vortarium Z, he is one of my Z-move users, Water Veil obviously to avoid the burns, um, so if his Rotom Wash wants to try and burn things it gives me a switch, however not really any reason why I'd want to switch Floatzel in on that, um, any Marowak potentially you know, can't burn me, um, I think that's it burn wise. Um, 
we are ice punch or waterfall bulk up i'm still yawning this is so bad excuse me bulk up and aqua jet um i didn't really need much else coverage to be honest because once rotom wash is gone his, his team really doesn't like this set at all um if i can get some chip damage off on the celesteela uh plus one um hydro vortex from waterfall still does like 60 percent to max defense Celesteela, which I am expecting because it's one of his best ways of taking on Megalop. He really doesn't have much of that at all. Um, so yeah, if I can get this thing set up, my best setup opportunity, I think, will be Nihilego. So if he has Nihilego in there, Scarfed, you know, if I can weaken that thing as well, I can scare it off with Aquajet every time. Um, so basically, if I can get a bulk up on Nihilego, maybe the Marowak if he brings it, um, and I, you know, bring it in, scare him out, click bulk up, and now we start doing some damage. The only thing I need to do here is before floats all the serious work is get rid of any Rotom Wash or Galissapod. I say Galissapod has a good matchup; it it does okay. I have things that can deal with it, um, but it, it kind of does quite well against me as well. So if one of them two go. Um, Floatzel is in a really good position for the rest of the game, just with stab water coverage, aqua jet to outspeed any scarfers like scarf Nihilego, scarf uh, Celesteela, scarf Zygarde, um, all these weird and wonderful things that could happen. Um, waterfall just for power and ice punches, therefore, Zygarde, uh, Whimsicott, um, what else can it hit? Uh, the Vullaby. So it's decent coverage just from these two types of moves uh, and the setup and I've already explained the EVs are wrong um, and I just made, I mean this is, this is the set I used in the battle um, but I, I already know, I acknowledge I've done the speed wrong on this and I, and I will not do that again, I will double check. Um, next up we have got Old Man Tut, we have got the uh, Kofa Grigus. Um, Max defense, basically this is my answer to Mega Gallade, um, kind of an answer to Zygarde, and kind of an answer to Celesteela, which all typically like to run physical sets. Um, Nihilego, I can kind of switch him on, um, if he like choice locks himself into poison moves, that won't do much at all. Um, but we are Shadow Ball, Willow is Pain Split, and Hidden Power of Fire. Um, Willow is incredible this game. He has got the Alola Marowak, which I am aware of, um, but he has got a Mega Gallade, Celesteela, and Zygarde. Considering I can't poison Celesteela, um, Burn would be useful for two reasons. One, it weakens his Heavy Slams. Two, it weakens um, the Celesteela. You know, it nullifies its leftovers, and then it relies on Leech Seed to heal. Um, I don't think Greg has any Wish Passes. No, he doesn't. So, um... That's his only form of recovery. So if I can get a Wisp on that, that'd be great. Obviously, if I burn Mega Gallade, that becomes way less of a threat. Um, obviously, I'm a Ghost, so I'm immune to its fighting type stab, and I have got 145 base defense. So I don't think even knock off. I think knock off will do half. Um, I am leftovers. I'm. I was sure in team building I was cold, but actually these leftovers. Um, turned out to be pretty clutch in the battle, so that worked out for me. Um, Pain Split is obviously my form of recovery. If I can catch things on the switch, um, to uh, just just weakened so if I'm a weakened Cofagrigus he wants to switch out from any potential burns you know I can catch something on the switch hopefully like a Celesteela or a Zygarde which is fat and HP so it'll give me a lot of recovery plus um, it would weaken that thing a lot um, Shadow Ball is just for damage because he doesn't have a normal type question mark no he doesn't have a normal type so um, Shadow Ball hits everything on his team I know not necessarily super effective or normally effective but um, we have Hidden Power Fire which does hit the Celesteela um, and the Sneasel. Can't remember why I picked Hidden Power Fire over Hidden Power Ice. Because um, Vol, as, as odd as it sounds, Volibee just like completely really walls this thing now. Um, and I think, well, the Hidden Power Fire is definitely there for Celesteela, but whether or not Shadow Ball would do, you know, nearly as much is, is a different thing. So well, that's the set this week for that. There was consideration of a, like an offensive trick room set because uh, we were talking about that in my front office. Um, but we just, I decided I built this team on my own in the end. Um, I decided that you know I needed to bring Fat because it does deal with his uh, offensive core of uh, Zygarde, um, Celesteela, Mega Gallade, and Nihilego incredibly well. So that was uh, Gotham Grigus. Next up we have got Clefable. Um, I ran the risk of not running. Um, uh, unaware this week we are going Magic Guard. We're going Leftover as well. Um, I was very much considering the Poison Berry. Um, 
just so I can take a hit from the Hilego and hit like a knockoff on it so I can get rid of any potential choice item or life orb or something like that. Um, but we're kind of like a bulky offense, I guess. Um, a bulky offensive set. Uh, we are 252 in HP, uh, 236 in spadef and 20 in speed. Uh, that's enough speed to outspeed an uninvested Celesteela, I believe. Um, so I'm pretty sure Celesteela will be a switch into this thing. Um, I can knock off its recovery or whatever item, so any choice variant of Celesteela or like Rocky Helmet, um, Rogue Assault Vest, something like that, <laughs> um, knock that off and uh, and make that thing crippled. And I do have obviously the Flame for, for the Celesteela as well. I mean Blast generally does quite well against his team, um, other than the Marowak and the Nihilego. I think that hits everything neutrally. Maybe the Gillispod. I'm still. I still don't know my typings. Like that's that's incredibly bad. I don't know what Bug and Fairy's like. So, um, but yeah, you know this. The coverage on this thing is pretty solid. Um, it hits the majority of his team quite well, apart from the Nihilego and the Rotom. But you know neither of them really want their items knocked off. Um, especially if it's Black Sludge and Leftovers. That's their forms of recovery gone. Um, other than Pain Split on Rotom, if he rings it. Um, and I've already mentioned the speeds there for the Celesteela, especially defensive, it's just like a counterpart to Gothagrigus. It still takes like, any, like, it'll take a decent amount, but it can still live a poison jab from the Gallade, um, and it can do a massive amount of damage back with the Moonblast. So, um, the Gallade, while I'm expecting it to come, I'm hoping won't be too much of an issue. Um, so it's quite a self-explanatory set for Clefable this week, really. The only risk I'm running is Magic Guard um, over Unaware. I'm pretty screwed anyway if Celesteel sets up because Heavy Slam will kill me. Excuse me. Oh, this yawning is terrible. Um, because I just can't take a Heavy Slam whether he's set up or not. Um, even if I'm max defense for Beery Berry, you know, that'll still 2k me, I'm pretty sure. Um, so uh, it would help with any setup version or variant of Mega Gallade. Um, Zygarde as well can't even help me with Nihilogo really. Um, help with the Sneasel. Uh, what else can set up on his team? I think that's it. Uh, and the Glisspod, maybe, if it gets anything to set up with. So, you know, I'm running a risk because the main sort of bulk of his, his team, the top four, um, can all set up, but I'm running the risk of him not bringing set up, basically. So, that's Clefable this week. Uh, penultimate Mon we have is Megalopony. Um, oh, sorry, I thought that was my brother. Let me, hopefully, I remember to edit that out. Um, we have Megalopony. Um, return Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, High Jump Kick. Uh, we have got 252 in attack, 252 in speed, and 4 in HP. Um, I was originally going to speed creep something. What was I speed creeping? Um, can't remember. I originally wanted. What was it I wanted to speed creep originally? It might have been a Whimsy Cop. Uh, I think it was Whimsy Cop, but then um, I did some checks and. <laughs> Max speed choice guard Celesteela um, hits 186 speed, so I had to run um, had to run max speed on this thing because then one out speed it and I two shot it with five jump kick, which is amazing. I think I might even two shot it with thunder punch, so that's kind of nice. Um, I have thunder punch as like a filler move, basically the moves I click this game are high jump kick and ice punch and return. Um, this coverage like deals with his team incredibly well. Um, return like does. I think if he's normal Gallade, like um, like no bulky Mega Gallade, like physically, I think Return does like 84% minimum. Um, Celesteela, max defense, still takes like 44 to 52% um, from a high jump kick. That's nuts. Um, that, that's a lot of damage. Even Mega Gallade takes like half from high jump kick, so that, that's mad. Um, Zygarde, even if he's defensive, still takes like half from high jump kick, and I do have the Ice Punch. Um, Nihilego can't switch into high jump kick, or any of these physical moves. I think Return might even be a 2 hit KO, depending on his HP investment, because Nihilego's defense is terrible. Um, Sneasel will die to a return or high jump kick. Rotten Wash can't switch into high jump kick and and then another move. Marowak, obviously because of Scrappy, can't switch in. Whimsicott can switch into high jump kick, but I will outspeed it unless he's choice scarfed and return or ice punch will kill that thing. Um, so Valley, depending on its typing, could be his best answer, along with Celesteela. Um, but because, well, it can be any type, so... Uh, I think Fairy would probably be the best one for him to bring because Return would be my strongest move for it. Um, not much point in him bringing anything else, I don't think. Um, and then Glisspod. I mean, Glisspod's 
the, the reason why I expected Galissapod was because actually it takes this thing on quite well. And I do have Thunder Punch. Now Thunder Punch is there for Celesteela and for the um, Galissapod if you did bring it. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I didn't feel I needed much else. I didn't need any priority or anything because he only has Extreme Speed on Zygarde. He has um, Shadow Sneak on Mega Glade which obviously doesn't affect Lopunny. He has Ice Shard on Sneasel which doesn't affect me. And Aqua Jet and Willis Pod, so it can only hit me with extreme speed and Aqua Jet. So otherwise, I felt like I was outspeeding his team anyway. So basically, this thing is does the owl every time Lopunny comes in on like a, an offensive mon of his, which is quite frail. Um, something dies because either he has to sack off the offensive mon, or he goes into his defensive mon, which takes a high jump kick and then dies to um, coverage of any other type of move. So that's nice. Uh, Mega Lopunny looking really friendly this week after its in impressive performance despite losing last week. So um, really looking forward to using Lop this week. And then finally, um, we're just going to try and get this wrapped up now because this is gone on for 20 minutes. My throat is shot and I have to edit out something now because my brother just burst into my room. So I'm like, oh, thanks, thanks, bro. So, um, finally, we have Crocodile. Um, he's like a bulky offensive one this week because if you look at his team, he doesn't actually have many ways of taking this on. Um, well, I say that he has got the Sneasel, the Rotom Wash, the Marowak, can't, yeah, Sneasel, Rotom Wash, Galissapod, um, but like his his four top Mons, really, well, uh, ignore Gallade, um, Celesteela, Zygarde, and Nihilego don't like dealing with Crook too well. Um, Nihilego obviously just dies to Earthquake. Um, Celesteela. If it has grass coverage, it can do something. I think Heavy Slam after Intimidate will still do like 25 to 30%. So, you know, it's like a 5 hit KO after leftovers. And in that time, I can wear him down with Fire Fang and Crunch. So I can get burns, flinches, or defense drops. Um, and Zygarde, depending on his set, if he's not invested in attack and he's kind of like some bulky set, after Intimidate, he won't be doing much damage to me at all. Admittedly, I won't be doing much to him. Um, but, you know, I'm max attack um, with some Spideth. Uh, like you can see I'm careful nature so I'm like a little bit of spideth bulk a little bit of fizz bulk with the intimidate um, a lot of HP because I can switch into Nihilego if he doesn't have the dazzling gleam or he doesn't click it this thing is a switch in like every single time because it resists power gem it resists sludge wave it resists it's immune to psychic moves uh, it's immune to thunderbolt um, yeah I think the only thing it gets to hit me is dazzling gleam or like hidden power fighting or water or a hidden power of some sort like that so I felt a bulky crocodile was quite useful this game again I'm running enough EVs to outspeed um, an uninvested Zygarde yeah that's the one uninvested Zygarde and Sil Valley um, and try to speed creep it a little bit extra just so you know if he tries to throw some extra EVs in speed he he won't outspeed me so that's the team this week um, sorry if it's I've gone on and I've gotten a bit more quiet um, it's because I'm aware my brother's in the shower next door to me um, and my throat is completely shot so um, thanks for watching this video guys I will bring the video for the battle yeah uh, to you tomorrow so make sure you do check that out make sure you check out all of Greg's links to his Twitter and his YouTube below as well and I'll see you for the battle tomorrow bye